welcome here in Holland for the first time on the Dutch festival. Uh, yes. Does Holland treat you well? Oh man, it's been incredible. Every time we come here, we love it. Uh, Amsterdam in particular has a history with us because yeah. uh, we wrote a, so uh, a song called Amsterdam. Yeah. It's on our first album just because uh, I had this kind of, uh, I was really infatuated with the city and, and, the, and the lights and the kind of the story behind Amsterdam, the architecture. Um, and so to actually come here and play Amsterdam yeah. in Amsterdam is so is it the note to is the note to Amsterdam? Yeah, so I would say so. I mean, yeah. I think of all the cities we've visited in Europe, it really hasn't disappointed. Like, it's definitely one of our favorite stops. Every time we go to Always. Europe, Amsterdam yeah. is like top three every time. Yeah. And is it because of um, feeling a little bit home? Because it is. and Amsterdam are quite rural. Yeah, I think it is a little bit of that. It is. I, I think that Las Vegas and Amsterdam are, are actually more alike than people would know. You know, I'm, I, I was born and raised in Las Vegas. I've been around the craziness, the tourists coming in, all the lights, the city that kind of never sleeps and yeah. kind of a little more relaxed on the rules. Yeah. And, uh, and Amsterdam uh, definitely has that 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 similarity. And uh, every time, but I will say the architecture here is is definitely better than Las Vegas. That's one thing where the similarity sort of. Ends. Yeah, yeah. This place has more history, more culture to it. Yeah, is it, is it something you feel when you come over to Europe that there is lots of history? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, America is a baby. Yeah, in, yeah. such you know, a young country compared to places like this, you know, Las Vegas sort of like, its culture is like no culture, and that's kind of the culture. It's you know faked I mean? culture. It's, it's fake culture. Yeah, yeah you can is, go to like cool. the fake, you know, like New York, Eiffel you can Tower. go to fake Caesars Palace. Yeah, is, is it the best town to grow up when you're a musician? Oh, because it's more an island. Yeah. In the desert. It is, yeah. It is. It, it was good, it was perfect for us, I would say, uh, because it's not so saturated with a million bands like uh, Los Angeles or New York is. So you're able to stick out a little bit easier. Uh, and also it was good for us because in order to make ends meet on the side, we would play half cover gigs, half original gigs okay. at, the, at all the hotels. And you oh, can't cool. do that in every city. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, were, we were doing six hour gigs at Caesars Palace and Mandalay Bay oh, wow. and like, yeah. and on the side. And that's how we were able to pay for our house together that we shared yeah. as a band. Um, so for a struggling poor musician, it's it's a good place to start. It's a little bit like the Beatles did in history in Hamburg. Yeah, yeah, the Beatles the Beatles uh, did take that road as well, and uh, it, it served us well because we got a lot of hours on a stage together um, that you know a young band needs. We we played four years uh, on stages four you know four times a week, six yeah. hour sets, and so. We had oh, hundreds and thousands of hours on the stage, and I think a lot of you know a young band needs that. It was good for us. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes I can imagine that there is time to grow or, 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 or um, spread out your wings and, and leave Vegas and touring totally. and get lots of more influences, etc. That's been the last year and a half for us, you know, really seeing the world and, yeah. and stepping out of Las Vegas. Um, but it's also nice to return home. We're going to play Life is Beautiful Festival there in like a month, which we're excited. But um, we, we have a lot of love for that city, a lot of pride for yeah. Las Vegas, you know. Do you have the feeling that the music can change in, in, in the years because of the new influence Definitely. that you have now on the road? Yeah. Definitely. We're, I mean, we're always writing, so we're, we're writing, you know, in the tour bus at night or in the hotel. and. And uh, both lyrically as well as musically, we, you know, we've been working in a lot of world instrumentation that we've been, you know, picking up a different drum here in this city or a different, you know, uh, stringed instrument here and, and, and it works its way into the music. So uh, seeing the world definitely influences yeah. the music that we're creating. So you're writing during the tour? Yes. Yeah, we kind of have to. I mean, we don't really have any time off um, for this whole year, so. Okay. If we're gonna if we're gonna write, we gotta do it on the road. We gotta do it in our bunks or in the hotel rooms or yeah. wherever we can, really. Because else the tour stops and there is no material for a new record, and then yeah, you gotta write yeah, we don't, tour. yeah, we we we're the kind of I don't know, we just write a lot. We write a lot of music. We really and, do. Uh, you know, for the for Night Visions, our first album, we probably had 150 to 200 demos to wow. work with and then to, to listen to and to compare and then to try and whittle it down to. 10 or 11 songs that actually, you know, is all it, fit together. Uh, this is also the reason that you brought up first a couple of EPs before a whole record? I think we did that uh, to really kind of find our sound. You know, we were a young band, we weren't sure what we wanted to do, what we wanted to create. We were just kind of throwing paint at the wall and seeing what stuck and how it, how it fit. Yeah. And then once we were like, you know, once we put out those four EPs, we were able to say, okay, this is what inspires us, this type of music, this, these sounds. And then we went and created our first album. 
There's only there's some things you, you can only do by like you can only learn by doing. Yeah. So like we just had to write music to find out what kind of band yeah, we were. That can be hard. Like okay, this is who we are, so we're gonna do this for the next couple of years. Sure. Or. Yeah, I think we try not to set limitations on ourselves. We really, uh, we just create. Yeah. Uh, even when we're writing, you know, right now, we're really not creating for a purpose. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not writing thinking we're creating a second album. We're just, we're, we're just creating. Uh, and and songs, some songs sound completely different from each other. But uh, at the end of the day, it still has the mark of Imagine Dragons. But but you know, it's. Uh, we create very freely. We we try not to set any bounds. Or so you create also your own box. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, now is not the time for us to judge or edit what we're doing, you know? Yeah. We feel like there's a, a, pl a place and a time for that, and that's when we get into the studio. Yeah. But now it's just, we're just, there's no limits to what we're doing right now. So there's no uh, helicopter view during the tour? <laughs> <laughs> no. You let us know. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing that sometimes, seeing a gig back on the television or something? Every once in a while, yeah. yeah. We, 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 you know, we like to watch, you know, ourselves play to make improvements and to make notes about what we're doing and try and improve, you know, yeah. every aspect of our show. We're sort of perfectionists that way. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and when you're writing a song, is it like um, writing a song because of the live show or also it has to fit good on the record? It's a good question. I think that's actually been more of an influence lately. Um, yeah. we, when we write, you know, I think lately we have been saying, hey, can you imagine playing this live? Wouldn't that be fun to play live? You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think. Especially in the festival circuit, yeah. Because you're playing a lot of outdoor settings, yeah. you know, to thousands, hundreds of thousands of people sometimes, and uh, and that in it definitely has inspired us when we're writing, thinking, you know, what would this sound like, you know, at, in, in, on a stage in front of. Yeah, well, front because of radioactivity. I think it's a really good radio song. Um, oh, thank you. But I'm completely sure everybody. <laughs> today here at Lowlands Festival knows it because of the radio, but yeah. I think it's a live song as well. Definitely, yeah, that song, we, we really, all, all the songs we write, we create them in a live setting, yeah. and, and we're strong believers that if a song doesn't stand well live, you don't put it on the record, okay. uh, because the, the record is really just there to attract people to the live show, yeah. and then hopefully the live show it, it exceeds the record experience. Um, uh, we, we really have always tried to be a live band, and, and that record is just to attract people to the live show. Is that something from Vegas? Uh, maybe. A live band? I mean, maybe. Vegas is a city, yeah. I think so. That's definitely where we, we kind of grew as a band, is on a stage, you know. We didn't yeah. have a lot of money to go to a studio and, and spend hours upon hours and days upon days in studios. We never could do that. It was like, you know, you got two days in a studio, and that was our all the money we had made for months, you know. Uh, so we did all, everything beforehand uh, in a live setting. Yeah. So it's live demoing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, all the EPs we did, we probably did in four or five days in the studio. We had to. Yeah. Wow. So we did, you know, Is it six good songs. To have For us, it was. Uh, I think every artist is different. Some some artists work well, you know, spending a lot of long time. Maybe they have the money to stay in a, a studio for a long time. For us, it was. Uh, we didn't have the money for it, and we, it was just what we had to do. Yeah. We had to create before we stepped into that studio, and then when we were in the studio, it's go time. But that will be, I think, easier for our next record. I mean, uh, Interscope, that's uh, I think label this, in, you know, you know, in the United States. Yeah, I, th I think that even then, we'd, we're not like, like, there's some bands that spend like a year in a studio, and that to us just like boggles our mind. We, do, we can never do that, you know. We, that's why we're creating so much music now. Yeah. So we don't have to, you know, be, be bogged down in the studio for months. Because we want to go out there and play music. That's, yeah. that's, that's what we're what out you, here to do. That's why you're a musician, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So we want to get our legs in a row and write as much as we can now. So yeah. that when we go to the studio, it's productive and, it, you know, we're spending maybe two or three months rather than a year. Yeah. Plus we do a lot of pre-production outside of the studio. A lot of times Wayne, you know, the best guitar tones that he'll get will be him sitting in a hotel room with his amp and wailing away with it with his microphone and then we get to record time and it's like that that sounds better than when he was in this huge you know two hundred thousand dollar studio yeah. with you know what i mean it's like for us we're all about what sounds right so it's a mindset as well yeah what sounds right and yeah. it doesn't always take the money to make something yeah. sound right sometimes a lot of the vocals we used even on the first record some of them were recorded into my straight into my laptop yeah, i just cool. was sitting in front of my laptop and singing into it and the quality we liked how it sounded. It sounded natural, it sounded raw, you know. So that makes it more personal as well. Yeah, it does. And, and also I think that there's something to be said for right when you write a song, yeah. that moment, especially for me as a vocalist, I, I maybe wrote a song at two in the morning and I was upset about something and I was 
really singing my heart into that computer. Yeah. And, and then to try to recreate that in the studio, it doesn't always work that way, at least for us, you know. Yeah. Okay, uh, 83,000 copies of Night Visions in one week. Wow. <laughs> yeah, for it, you had it. Was it, does it give you more pressure for next record? No, it's like it's kind of comforting to know there's going to be at least a few people that's going to hear the second record. We, we weren't sure that was going to yeah. be the case of the first record, oh, so okay. um, yeah, we're excited. We're, we're not afraid of, second, of writing the second record. We don't think, yeah, we really don't even think about it. We just we at the end of the day, we sit down and we create music that 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 inspires us, yeah. that that we enjoy, um, that we're proud of. And sometimes that, it took us four years to create a first record that we were proud of, you know. And uh, who's to say when the next record will come out until we feel proud of something that we've created? You know, we feel that that's, it's first, more, most important that you own your own music, that yeah. it's something that you created for you. If you're ever creating, at least in my opinion, if you're ever creating something to, to kind of, to, for the masses, or you're creating something to try to please others, the authenticity of it is, it's, it's not there. Yeah, people can tell that. People are a good judge of what's authentic and what's real for an artist. And so we just try to be authentic about our creating process. That's a great spirit, guys. Thank you very much. Oh, of course. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it.